All right, I'm here with another episode with Navin. And every time I do this, by the way, I get people hitting me up. When are you having more content with Navin? Because every time, every for some reason, every time we do some content together, we clip it. It goes somewhere. You've been featured in NFT twice now. Yeah, yeah. On the NFT Instagram twice. So let's just see if we can make it to the third. I've been there twice too now. I, I got there twice too. Let's One with you. Yeah. That was obviously your take around the metaverse. I was there early with a, a post from the second floor podcast made yep. it on the nft page i don't know how hype the nft page is but the first time i did something about nfts the entire comments was like this guy's an idiot and that was like when it was like kind of started so <laughs> i think the best thing about what you just said is so many people have hit me up on youtube discord etc be like first of all who's sean because they like love all yeah. your content they're like when are you guys making more stuff yeah they're like the energy the vibes everything is on point i'm like yo like we gotta do more I know, and, 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 and it's my bad because it's really around time, right? And I, yep. I want to do something more consistently, and it's just time. And I think you're, you're involved in many things, and yep. I'm involved in many things. But I love when you like hit up, let's, like, let's do some content. I know, you're, Ooh, I know you go down to L.A. Uh, on Sunday. so I'm excited to be here. And just for anyone who hasn't seen this space yet, look at the lighting. Oh, the setup, like, it's a mood. It's a vibe. It's a huge vibe right it's now. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. we got some <laughs> plants. It's a vibe. So listen, um, I know you're all, you're, you're abreast of what's happening in the creator yeah. economy, NFT space. A uh, lot of news, man. A lot of news oh that's God. been going down. But before I get to that, I just want to, I, I don't know if you saw the Drake, if you saw the Drake, uh, having dinner with Amari <laughs> Bailey's yeah. mom at Dodger Stadium today. I mean, I feel bad for Drake. Okay, let me tell you this. This poor guy rented out Dodger Stadium Literally, yeah. just so that he could get in Amari Bailey's mom's pants. And, you know, there's a helicopter up top and, you know, just ruins his vibe. Yeah. And now the entire Internet is blowing, you know, blowing it up. And, you know, they're, they're making fun of Amari Bailey. And this guy... Put all this effort in just to, I just feel bad for Drake. For the first date. First of all, most amazing first date probably any of us could imagine. But it was crazy. I didn't know that was Amari, Amari Bailey's mom until you just said that. Oh, saw, you didn't know that? Oh. I saw the picture this morning. I saw the guy post it and it was going viral. I just thought it was like so, some celebrity. So I, lo I saw it. I think I saw it last night or this morning. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't identify who the woman was. And of course, yeah. you know, I'm looking at it. I'm like trying to see who that is. Um. Wow. But then I think the internet figured it out. Yeah. They put two and two together that that was his mom. And crazy. Because he just got Mr. California basketball, like basketball player of the year, whatever the award is. Yeah. So the fact that it's his mom is just like the timing is unreal, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think her, his mom, uh, her IG blew up, like doubled the first time that they were seen together. It was Michael B. Jordan, Drake, and her sitting beside each other. And she was like, you know, she she was wearing something fine, but just like her she, her ass was. I mean, it, it took up the entire conversation, which is funny because you have Michael B. Jordan, yeah, legend, Matthew. Drake, yep. goat, and then you have her, and she took the entire conversation. That's insane. I need to see that picture. So who she is first of all. I <laughs> the the question I have for you is that if you're if you're Mari Bailey. And you got a mom that hot. Is it a is it a is it a W or is it an L for you? Because everyone, every guy is like, yep. yo, your mom, your like so dope. You know what I mean? I think is the son. I'm gonna put my me in his his shoes, right? Is the son that's a L. Yeah. It's like you don't want people talking about your mom like that. But in the bigger picture of things, like she's now becoming her own celebrity, I'm assuming. Yeah. Tons of followers, brand deals, and that's only gonna elevate him. And I wonder if there's like something this is off topic. I wonder if there's something like deeper into this where like maybe Drake is trying to recruit her to OVO or Jordan Brand with Amari because uh, Amari could be next up. Uh, so now I'm just throwing, you know, I'm throwing stuff in the wind right now. So let me let, let me put you in into <laughs> the uh, let me flash forward in five years. What's going to happen? Okay. Uh, OVO signs Amari. Yeah. Uh, to a deal, shoe deal or just brand deal. Amari gets drafted by the Raptors. And now you're creating an entire empire oh. around Amari, OVO, like the next Jordan. Seriously, because you, you got to think about it. OVO sports makes sense. Drake's a huge like Raptor fan. Yep. I just thought about that, but you just connected the dots right there. Yeah. So I think we got to 
we gotta remember this piece of content if, I, yeah. if this happens. Well, we gotta send it to Drake, and Drake's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, good, good idea." Um, last thing around this: Do you think that Amari, in some way, is enjoying it because his mom is basically getting the cosign from Drake? Not a cosign, but you know, Drake is obviously interested, and, yep. and in turn, he's kind of getting a cosign from Drake. Imagine you're like a sixteen, Seriously. you're seventeen year old kid, and and. You're like hanging with Drake. Seriously, I feel like that's the ultimate cosign, and the fact that he's in that inner circle. Like, how many people would like kill to like be a part of that? Drake's coming to their games. He's hanging out with LeBron James and the kids. Like, in my mind, he's already made it. Yeah, got to keep going with it. Yeah, I, I think Drake's a genius. Um, th the reason why Drake is a genius is because I think, and I I heard this on DJ Academics. He was on this flagrant two uh, pod talking about why Drake is the goat. Yeah. See, Drake has been really good at identifying who's hot and yeah. kind of jumping on their waves, but doing it in a way that where he's been collaborative as opposed to sort of stealing their Taking heat. From them, yeah. It's like he's the ultimate he's the ultimate collaborator, right? And he can switch between uh, different genres. He can collaborate with uh, he just has a pulse of who's hot, like who's upcoming. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's why he's the GOAT. Yeah. Well, the biggest thing is he always, like you say, he always knows what's hot. And he dabbles in so many different things. Like, yeah. How many, like, rappers will stick to one thing? He's in different genres, different sports, different leagues, probably investing in things we don't know about. And he's in esports. Not a lot of people dabble in all these things. You know, I, I sent out a tweet recently, and, and, and Drake kind of inspired me around this. Because in, t in my entire career, people have told me that, Sean, you will never make it big in Canada. You have to either move to Canada, I mean, move to the States, yep. um, and you should not tell people that you're from Canada or that you're Canadian. Like, still to this day, that people tell me that. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And it's interesting because Drake has only just leaned, yes, he lives in Cali, yep. but he's only just leaned into the fact that he's Canadian throughout his entire career, yep. and look over the last decade plus, like he certified himself as the goat, yeah. And so to me, it is, it, it literally is the is contrarian to every single thing that we've been taught as Canadians. Don't talk about the fact that you're Seriously, Canadian. Though. It's not cool. It's not yep. whatever. The biggest thing is that he owned it, and that's the issue. Is like even myself, people have told me that too. Is like, but if we don't, if all of us don't come together and own the fact that we're Canadian, then we're only gonna have the big guys like Drake to put on for us. Yeah. There's not that many people doing it. That's why, like, I'm happy he did that because he's literally the goat of Canada. Yeah. And he's probably the goat in other places too. Well, I, I, that's why I say he's the goat of yeah. hip hop. Um, you know, th th this, this conversation around Amari is interesting because I think it is a great transition into what's been happening in college around yes. NIL, name, yep. image, likeness. The fact that now as a individual, as a athlete, you can now, you know, you can get a bag now, which is super disruptive. Like this has never happened. And can obviously... You? Can you just imagine if some of the athletes like when Kevin Durant, Reggie Bush, these guys went to the NCAA, how much they would have made? Well, I, like, I mean, I, I think about Zion. I oh, mean, man. Yeah. Think about the climate now in Zion. <laughs> I mean, Zion could have been a billionaire. Every man. brand deal he would have got. But I'm, I'm excited for the kids because, like, you know, we work and train with so many NCAA athletes. And now it's like there's no rules for us. We can give them, we can give them gear. We're actually planning some collabs with some UCLA guys right now. Sorry, UCLA guys right now. And we're trying to, wow. like, navigate, like, how can we actually help these athletes put them on? Yeah. Obviously allow them to make a lot of money, but create like dope piece of clothing, dope piece of content and elevate them. So I'm excited because like it's the first time where there's, we're talking to the guys, right? Obviously we're trying to get all the rules and make sure we understand everything. What do they need to submit? What are the contracts? If there's any, and all the guys just like, man, now nah, there's, there's nothing. There's literally nothing. It's just like, let's just do it. As long as we don't show like the team logo and stuff, which is great. Cause I think yeah. right now it's still so open. I think later on they may add some more rules and stuff, but it's exciting. So we're trying to capitalize on it right now for this year and put some of these athletes on. Well, I, I think it's super exciting, especially for brands that are upcoming and for you to sign somebody yeah. that is hot. Yeah. Like, of course, the people that would go, like, number one in a draft. And let's just talk about basketball for a second. Like, yeah. the people that would go number one in a draft or number two, three, like, yeah, they're going to get – they're probably they're understanding that like I should probably wait to get the Nike deal or whatever the Adidas deal, but what if you're like a second round NBA draft yeah. pick and you're like hmm, maybe let me sign with, you know let me sign with the 
within the lab. And imagine that guy becomes like, you know, I don't know, the next, you know, Luca uh, or exactly. Trey or whatever. Yeah. And now you have basically what j happened with Nike with Jordan. Yep. It was like he signed him and like just took the took the brand to the moon. Exactly. Um, you know, when it when when the day dropped, I saw like I saw all these like news reports of all these athletes hitting up like Dave Portnoy from Barstool. Yeah. And some Barstool some girl was like yeah. some girl is to Dave Portnoy is like, yep. Hey, like I'm a I'm yep. like a gymnast. Can you like I wanna be the first be the Barstool first sports a athlete? And Dave Portnoy was like, Okay, how do you how do you do this? Yeah, yeah. Like, man. He's, I remember watching the video, and I was like, as soon as I saw his video, I was like, okay, it's time. Yeah. Because, like, they created stool athletes. I don't even know how many they signed, but it's been a lot so far. Yeah. And I was like, man, like, these guys, I feel like to do this properly, not only do you need to have, like, the connections and resource, like, to the athletes, but you got to be, like, first. You got to be, be first. be first mover, right? First mover's advantage. You got to be in there. And, like, some of the deals, like, I think the Cavender twins signed, like, a massive deal with Boost Mobile and some other brand and like people are just the bag is being thrown yeah which is cool i'm happy for the athletes because like they don't monetize so now it's great but i'm also excited now with the whole youtube being like everything content wise being opened up how are the next few years going to play out we may find like some crazy unicorns oh in absolutely the NCAA space right well you have to i mean i think if you're a brand and the market has not been established yep there might be an opportunity for you to get underpriced attention right now right underpriced height exactly you get a tray that's like really young that probably doesn't know his full potential yep. you could sign him to a deal and then later on hopefully you know the agreement is great and you treat him great and you know you stays. Yeah. he stays and now he's like repping yourself i mean the the the, the potential is enormous yeah i feel like this is literally like the most important things for like brands especially like ours that are still small and trying to compete with nike and Adidas. we have the chance right now if we move quickly to like make some really dope, like to make damage in the market. Yeah. But also like just foster these relationships, which we already have. And now we can just like, we can actually monetize and help those kids make money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to think about like, you know, maybe, maybe some athletes like the DMSK signs. I don't know. We, we should sign up some athletes. We're not in the sports space, but like, no, but like we could we think about all the athletes that have like the beers, especially the hockey players yeah. and stuff like that. I feel like People the potential could be endless. Peop yeah, no, people of color, uh, people of color. I'm thinking, I'm like, we should definitely look into this. Guys, look into some Yo, athletes. Yo, you write it down. Look, look into <laughs> some athletes, Maria, look into some athletes <laughs> that we can sponsor in the States. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's going to be huge. So uh, the only thing that I'm scared about when it comes to this is that let's say you are, let's say you are, a not so let's say you're an amazing athlete let's yeah. say you're on, on a team you're an amazing athlete but your your social following is crap like maybe you don't have social media Most maybe you don't have yeah. ig yeah would there be resentment if somebody like you is getting the bag and imagine you're in school and somebody yeah. is like rolling in with their news royals royce <laughs> and you're you're coming in on the bus and you're on the same team and maybe i'm better than you yet because you have the business around you yeah I think that would create a lot of envy. I totally agree too. I think so. Something we're trying to implement, and this might take us months to do, is like also teach these guys like how to be a part of the creator economy. Because a lot of them, like you said, they may have one, two thousand followers. Some actually have like fifty, sixty k, but they're still not making content. It's just because people see the highlights and pe like the kids want to follow them. Yeah. So now it's like if we can empower all these guys to like make proper content, the sky's the limit. But the envy side, I don't think that's always going to be around no matter I, what. I'm assuming it exists already because. Yeah. From a, you know, for example, if you're on overtime and you get featured in overtime, you know how overtime is like yep. to me, overtime, overtime is like the, um, it's like, obviously it's, it's the house of highlights for college yep. and, and, and below. But if you, if you get like an overtime, you oh. know, cosign or they, they put you up, that's like, whoa, that's like, instant. you know, that's currency, exactly. that's currency, right? Exactly. It's yeah. like the front page of the news, like, wow, right? Exactly. And I, I, I bet that creates some envy, but this would take it to a next level because it's actual dollars. So if you're like exactly, the, yeah. if you're like the linebacker, you know, you're the, the, the offensive line, you know, you're a lineman and like the quarterback is getting all the, all the lob all the and then they, they get all this money. Like it's going to create a lot of, yeah, I, I yeah. D disparity. It'll be interesting to see like how that plays out. I hope that's not going to happen, but I think that's something we need to watch out for, for sure. 
Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, it, it, it dovetails really in, it, well into the conversation around NFTs and like the fact that sports is becoming, you know, getting into this a little bit more as well. Um, I, I feel that there, we're, we're going to get to a point where if you are a, if you are an organization, if you are a team, like you're the Charlotte Hornets, or for example, you know, it, it might be economically beneficial to get somebody that has more followers, that has more personality, more <laughs> clout, because it might drive more people into the attendance. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, sports is entertainment. So I wonder if that's going to start happening where, where you – where yeah, like the fact that you're popular yeah. will help a team get you. Does that yeah. make sense? It's gonna increase your salary potentially, give you like more opportunities within the team. I think like with GMs, what we've seen, there's two sides of GMs. They love the young generation and the other side hates it because they don't want the attention, they don't want the negativity that can come with being a social media star. Yeah. But for me, like imagine we go sign, let's say Zion was still there, he gets signed, he has five million followers. That's more than the team page and everyone else combined on your team. It's like a no brainer. Because you know he's driving most of the sales and tickets and all that yeah. kind of for you. I, I haven't seen it yet happen. Yeah. Because I think, I think at the end of the day, the GM still want to win. Yeah. Uh, and they don't just want to have a social media star. But I think where – I think you brought up a really good point. I think where it's going to happen is in the salary discussion. Yeah. So maybe it's not how a, a GM puts the team together. Like, oh, we have Taco Fall, who's a big social media star. By the way, I don't know if Taco Falls are. He could be. A, he, he could be. Yeah, Bol Bol and Taco could be definitely big social media stars. <laughs> but let's say Bol Bol. You have something like Bol Bol, right? Uh, he's nice. I mean, he, he's not Kevin Durant. Yeah. He's a nice kid. Yeah. Uh, let's say he was a social media star and he's on the bench. Does he get more money because he brings more fans into the building? It's potential, and what if you build in like content, YouTube yeah. channel, this post, NFTs, that. like Top Shot. How much is your Top Shot value? Exactly, at? that that could be like, that could be pretty interesting. Like, so another guy on social media who I love is Bo Boban. I don't know if you know Boban. No, no. He played with Luca at Dallas. Oh he yeah, just got yeah, traded. Yeah, yeah. He's like one of the funniest. Kids. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. like the perfect guy. Where it's like he's like seven ten or something. Like yeah. hands are like triple my size. Like, but on social media, he's a clown. Like yeah. he's, he's making his own cartoons right now. He's just so funny. So I would love to see like a guy like him get more opportunities to do this kind of stuff. Are you following JJ Redick? On, uh, his, his podcast. On his podcast. His podcast, yeah. It's it's remarkable because he's good. He has like I don't know what he's at now. If he's at like a three hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah. But he's pumping out content, content. like every guests. single week. Yeah. And he's doing a breakdown of all the games. Yeah. This guy has like become a creator. Overnight, like over the last couple of years, like I think he was with the Ringer, and now he's, uh, I think he's doing it by himself. I think now he's he maybe by himself. Yeah, he might. He but, but think about how JJ Redick. Obviously, he's like, he's he's obviously way past his prime now. Yeah. But imagine him doing that, you know, when he started. Like, would he be able to develop way more of a following and like all that kind of stuff? Because he's he's doing amazingly well. He's doing good and. Did you follow him at Duke? Like, are you familiar with his story? I, I'm not. I, the reason he was I'm a legend that is, at Duke. Yeah, like it would be, imagine his thirty for thirty one day. Yeah. Like this, this kid from Duke just ended up being a shooter. Actually, had a crazy, like, really solid NBA career. I think, like, yeah, amazing. Like that, became Jack. Like all these like, cool stories, and now he's like probably the top content creator. Correct me if I'm wrong. In the NBA right now, he might be up there. Well, I'm I know a podcaster. Like, podcast. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Podcast. But he's, they're not he's like LeBron, he's not like no, no, not LeBron, player, like, but like. Content creator, podcaster, like he's yeah. up there. Like. Podcaster, definitely. Yeah. YouTuber. Uh, I'm to think, well, I know Matisse. Like, Matisse uh, Tybel's on there. He, yeah. He's, so that's a good example. A young kid. Yeah. He gets it. Exactly. He understands. Um, Jimmy Butler's played with that. Oh, a Jimmy bit. Butler's doing you know, well. Yeah. Guys, JaVale. I think Majel. JaVale I, did a lot. During the bubble, but I haven't seen anything yeah. since. Yeah. He hosts like esports gaming tournaments. Yeah. He's like huge into content. So obviously Kevin Durant, like he has his own brand around the boardroom and stuff like you that. You saw his tweet the other day? Um, someone called him out. Oh, someone called him out for just saying something. I don't know if he was like using a burner or he just like was calling people out on Twitter. And his response was like, "This is a part of my brand." Oh, he deleted. I he, can't. He. I think what happened was he deleted a post. Okay. Yeah. And then somebody's like, "Why are you deleting a post?" There you go. Or something like that. I, I just love it. He's like, "That's who I am." Like, that's it. That's all yeah. you're getting, and it's great. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I am not. I think it's nice that. Kevin Durant is authentic and genuine. Yeah. 
but I feel like he gets too salty. Like he shouldn't he get so he shouldn't be so wrapped up about like <laughs> you know you know just random stuff yeah, happening on social. Marcus A B you know A B C <laughs> like saying something on. I Twitter. think that's what like makes him so like relatable though. Yeah, is that he gets riled up for no reason about like random people trolling him, which is like hilarious. It makes him like that. That human, you get to see that human side of him. Yeah. But you know, for most social media or for most NBA guys, they don't give a crap. Yeah. But it's just hilarious that he always responds. <laughs> he he always responds. It, it it's really great. Um, I wanted to I want to chat a little bit of NFTs and yep. you know, I'm not gonna lie, the NFT market has crashed. It's crashed. Yeah. It is right. It's taking a hit right now. And I think that it's a great thing. Yep. I think that the fact that NFTs have the, the market has crashed is a great thing for for the world because uh, what what it's going to do, it's going to remove the riffraff. The people that yes. really, truly care about it are going to be involved. Mm -hmm. The people that are still building technology around it are going to wrap their arms around this and build cool, you know, amazing things around it. And I think we're going to have another NFT boom uh, later on, but the like the winter has sort of come, and uh, we all predicted this to happen. It had to the come. winter has yeah. winter has come, and now it's time to build. Yeah, like what can we build on top of this NFTs? Like right now, the way that people are giving off NFTs, it was like a, <laughs> I mean, it was just a firestorm. Like I have this fucking this thing. Like put it up, and put it as a digital <laughs> digital something, and it's like turning, and you're like enjoying it, watching it turn, and then NFT one or one. Put it up. Five thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it 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 was crazy. But I think, to me, I I will say this to the moon when it comes to NFTs is that w the like the value of the NFTs, the benefits of the NFTs are around like getting instead of you're trading likes and comments for actual investments. People actually feel like they own something. Exactly. Right? This is not only in sports, but it's going to happen in education, in yep. commerce, in other places. So people are selling things that are nice, like digital art, which yep. is nice. I'm looking at NFTs as a, as a, like a financial instrument. Um, and I think this is where, that's where the excitement is going to come. The true value is going to come from. Yeah. But what what are your feelings around you know the, the the winter the NFT winter that we're in right now? I think you s said everything perfectly. It's like we knew it was coming, I, we just didn't know when. It's still crazy though that I think it was like two billion in sales still in, in the NFT market only for half of the year, which yep. is still crazy. But I've even noticed myself personally. Like, look at Top Shot, the last weeks or months. Like there, yep. I haven't looked at. I haven't even opened my account. wasn't before. We're on there. We're trying to find moments stuff, but like it fizzled out. And same with the other like NFT projects that are coming out. And the other thing too is like, everyone's trying to pump and dump. Everyone's trying to put out this, here's a panda, here's a dog, here's a cat. There's like seven different NFT cat projects. Like how much can you put out, right? Yeah. So like for me, like with NFTs, I'm still, we said it last time, it's still like, we're still discovering it. Like yeah. what is it gonna become? I think you hit on the head with some of the instruments that you talked about, especially with money and fin uh, sorry, education fin and finances. Right now with NFTs, all I can say is like, there's still some really dope projects out there, like the oh, man. Club and stuff. It's like you have to find the ones where like the community is thriving. There's thousands of people actively, you know, communicating and they're like building past what the cost of the NFT is. Yeah. But I don't think people understand that yet because we're still so early. I think we're still way too early. Yeah. And I think even for NBA Top Shot, like I think it's so early. You haven't even we haven't even built the flex. Yep. Like what is the how do you flex your your NFTs? Yep. Right. How do you you can't flex it right nope. now? There's no way to flex it. They haven't even built other sort of utility. Haven't ha hasn't it hasn't connected with the actual games yet. I think think there's so much opportunity here. So much, yeah. and it's still very early. Like I think the genie's out of the bottle, and it's it's. I'm so excited about it, dude. I've been every week. I don't know if you've been seeing this. Every week I've been in this mirror. Uh, competition. Yeah, yeah. So mirror yeah, is a the platform. Right yeah, yep. the right the right race. Yep. Uh, mirror is a platform. You can check it out. Mirror X Y Z. Uh, in order to publish on Mirror, you have to be able to. Uh, the community decides. So every week on Wednesday, they have a race. Yep. Where the top ten people sort of get in. Right. 
And for the last number of weeks, I've actually been in it. I've been in the top been 10. In the tops, yeah. But every week I get, I get usurped because there's like crypto whales that come in and, <laughs> you know, or they're like, you know, people are very connected. I'm not as connected in that ecosystem, but I, 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 I see the promise of publishing uh, on that platform yeah. because yeah. there's so many things that you can do. You can give you can publish something and have split. So if we have a so pod on there, yeah. you know, we can split the earnings of our NFT. Yep. There's like uh, limited editions. I mean, there's so many things that you can do in it. And it, the what, thing I love about mirror is that it's clean. It's simple. Yep. It's, it's, uh, you know, developers are doing a really great job. It's, it's basically, uh, the easiest web three platform that you can use. I, I think it's a, gateway drug to web three yeah uh that that's what mirror is and i i'm excited to one i don't know what it's gonna be like 2028 before i get in there and publish <laughs> i voted for you by the way last time i voted i upvoted you really yeah i put some i have some vote, voting cred on i gotta get some more cred on there it's funny because two weeks ago um a new friend lila she won and i remember looking on the leaderboard and i think you i'm pretty sure you were top 10 yeah and then i'm always top 10 you're always and top 10 and then i looked i'm like i'm like oh lila won i was like this is crazy like and there's a lot of people like are active on there. Like tons of votes are going out. Yep. And like like you said, I think that's like, I love the split feature. Yeah. I love like the fact that you can like go in there and create content, be able to like send it out to different people. Um, another company doing that is like Stir, which is like a big like creative company. I love like, Stir. Yeah, Stir is dope. Like Eric did it where he like, if you uh, contribute ideas to his YouTube video, he's splitting like monetization yep. 100, 100, 100 ways. I'm like, yo, this is like the future. Like this is amazing way to build in your uh, community and engage with your fans. Yeah, I, I, I thought, so two people that really uh, inspired me to use Mirror was this guy named Packy McCormick. He's a great yep. writer. He's yep. got a, a, a not boring sort of newsletter. What was really interesting was that he put out an NFT of his um, article, uh, Power to the People, which is something that like, for God's sakes, we're, we've been talking about for every for so the entire year. <laughs> uh, it was an awesome article and it sort of, it, it just puts it all together around what, what we've been talking about. But what was cool is what he split. Yeah, he split the NFT with all the contributors of that. That's so great. the legions and yep. all that kind of he, he split that, which was really cool. And I thought what Colin Samir did was really, really cool yeah. where they were like, hey, by the way, if you retweet this, you can get a cut yes. of the NFT sale. Yep. OK, so like. And a lot. I, I know I may, maybe I'm an idiot. But I'm like, wow, that's – you're basically monetizing. You're incentivizing people to share yep, to the NFT literally with money. Now, the problem is is that I, I shared it too, but the gas fees on that I were didn't even more, accept it. The gas <laughs> fees were more than the actual – what I would receive. It was like five yeah. bucks, and the gas fees were like $8 billion. Uh, But, you know – I, w I was like, that's brilliant because finally you're now getting incentivized and it goes back to this idea of how do we trade likes and comments yep. for ownership? This how do we trade shares? I mean, that's a beautiful example. You're trading a share yep. for money. Yep. That's amazing. That's so, yeah. so, so uh, to me, I think we're, that's where we're going. Like social media right now is the, like we're going to look back and be like, likes and comments and shit you don't get incentivized for that you're just doing that for free, for free yeah. you're giving you're giving your tap you're giving your eyeballs for free you idiot no you should if you're in if you are interested in this brand you should be invested in the future outcome and the potential of brand and what's fascinating is you have all these young kids coming up they say uh a, a, like a small minority of them are saying we, we're investors yeah what it's like what yeah exactly like, we're in <laughs> like people in top shot call themselves investors yeah you know back in the day like kids want to be like astronauts and like whatnot and like then they want to be like social media stars and now they want to be like invest investors right they yep. want to be able to have their hands in different, different things they want to I mean, find it's own crazy where the world's going man web 3.0 man the revolution is a uh, is upon us i think in some ways it's still going to be a little while but i'm like super excited for like, everything you just said because the potential is so the potential is so crazy for what we're going to be able to do and accomplish 
And like I'm most excited for like the ways we're going to be able to include like you said, our fans. Yeah. How do we turn? How do we monetize everyone into investors and let them feel more a part of the brand outside of just a basic Discord? Yeah. These are the tools that we you know we need. I think you're seeing people um, embrace be, because of tech, because of like Robinhood and Wealth Simple. Yeah. You know, the tech, not the the idea of investing has become sort of mainstream. So regular people mm -hmm. can now do this, and I feel like with nfts it's another angle for people to be like yeah i'm invested in this company on this brand like it's just a natural extension of where the world is going to exactly um so yeah it's fascinating yeah it'll be exciting once brands start like literally leveraging nfts and maybe they have already but like you know louis vuitton or whatever you well you like, mentioned like cnn and twitter and oh stuff. like yeah i totally forgot about that so i don't know if you saw the cnn nft job first of all i was like what the hell because it was like super like random so I went and checked it out. Obviously, it had been sold out within whatever twenty minutes by the time I saw it. But the fact that like those companies are starting to like test and dabble in that, I like, like it. Yeah, that's interesting, by the way, because like who knows the amount of content they have stored up for hundreds of thousands of years, probably. And then the Twitter thing, I wake up, head on Twitter, and I see this thing going viral. It I'm was like, free too. I'm like, damn, how the hell do we get a Twitter NFT? That's all I thought. Was, how do we get the Twitter NFT? Because it was dope what they created. I think it was like 100 plus something. 140, I think. 140 different NFTs. Like, man, yo, this is cool. Because like that's helping everything go a little bit more mainstream and make people question what the hell is an NFT. Well, yeah, you definitely want to. I mean, I, I think Jack Dorsey at Twitter is very bullish on blockchain. Yeah. Very bullish on Bitcoin. Uh, I think he like would love to make. He's a he's a nut, but I think he wants to make like Twitter decentralized at some point. Interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's great for iconic brands like CNN, yeah. like Twitter, uh, to to experiment and dabble. And I actually tried to, I you know, I I, I, what, I don't know how serious I was on buying one of them, but uh, yeah, I saw it like you know when Turner uh, launched the, you know, I think one of them was when Turner launched CNN. Yeah, there, that was yeah, like, you can get that like, was, was like five hundred editions of that. Um, I think it's I think it's interesting. There was like there are some NFTs that have. A real world utility that have been like really interesting so like i know the warriors put out one where you can get a one of one of like a ring and then but then like courtside seats or something like that yeah, like, no, that's like yeah. the la dodgers their championship ring drops next week yeah and i didn't see the list because i didn't click on the website but people in the comments were in the utilities unreal yeah for getting the digital championship ring so i'm like man this is like that's dope imagine had the lakers won this year or maybe next year and it's lebron's final year they win they released the NFT championship ring of that year. Like that kind of stuff is like, is cool. And the fact that they're building in courtside tickets. Yeah. You know, I don't know what the price is going to be, but for the Twitter NFT, I may be wrong, but I think they were getting resold for like 25,000 plus from a free NFT. That's crazy. To be like, yo, that's crazy. And people are buying it, which is insane. I, I, um, I think because we haven't, like I go back to the flex of it. Like yeah. when you have it, what are you going to do with it, right? Like right now, just you send you what your open sea link, but half the world doesn't know what open sea link is. So totally. What they can do. I'm starting to see people build, and you've probably seen this for Top Shot and stuff, like the digital the digital frames that are gonna go on your wall. Yeah. And it shows your Top Shot moments. Like that kind of stuff is like cool, but yeah. like I don't think anyone's there yet. You're not gonna put one right here behind us. That's like here's all Sean's NFTs. Like it's not there. You know what I mean? But I think in the future as we build our collections, I think it's all gonna be about the flex. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. It, For most people, they're they're going they're going to want to flex. Is what I mean. Yeah. It's 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 like the new art. Yeah. Really. You know, I uh recently we went to uh, we shot something at the Imagine Van Gogh, which was nasty, by the oh, way. Oh, thank you. Kudos thank to you. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I know nice. it was got it was great, and, and kudos to the team for uh you know uh producing it, and I really enjoyed it, but. I feel like I didn't have a connection to the art mm. as an individual. Yeah. Like I, I know Vincent van Gogh, but I didn't, I didn't understand the history behind it. Right. And it kind of, it, it I was thinking about NFTs and digital art. And the reason why we buy it is because we're so connected with it. Right. Mm -hmm. We're connected to the story. Yep. And I think what was missing with the van Gogh piece is that I wasn't connected to the story. So that's why I believe NFTs and digital art is going to be more impactful uh, and more and bigger 
because it's gonna be more ubiquitous and we we can have a story behind it like we have a story behind that luca i uh, where, where was i when i saw that right and 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 and, and have it on our wall because we, we remember the moment where we were at the time. Exactly. But if I have a Vincent Van Gogh image, I I don't have a story behind it. Yeah, I totally right? agree with you. So that's why the, I had an unlock to say, wait a minute, like that's why this digital art is going to be more valuable as a, tot- you know, it, not only are we going to produce more of this, yep. but more and more people will have access to art that they will pay for. And so thinking about it from an abundance mindset, it's like there's going to be way more art, like anything on in the internet could be NFT essentially. Yep. Any piece of media could be tokenized and it's going to be way more accessible to more people. Art in itself today, like traditional art, it's only accessible to a few. So that's why I just believe, I said this, I, you know, that digital art will be more valuable than traditional art. Um, it sounds crazy, but I just believe it. No, I totally agree with you. And the other thing just to add to everything you just said is like, now, when you go find digital art on any, whatever platform you use, you're able to like find the artist, follow them on Twitter, connect with them, see their story. I just feel like there's more, right? It's like the Van Gogh stuff. Yeah, you can go Google him and maybe find some books or whatever, but I can't physically go talk to him. Yeah. So that's like another layer of like, I can go talk to this artist, see what they're doing, follow their life and become even more enthralled into what's happening. And now that I have one, probably going to want, you know, I mean, get, get the, the subsequent ones that are coming next from that artist. Yeah. Which I think it just adds to the utility behind the whole NFT world. I, it, you know, man, it, it's exciting. I, um, I can't wait to see what happens uh, around this. It's NFT gonna be a space. crazy it, ride, yeah. It, anything else that's interesting in the NFT space that you're, you're you're sort of you're looking at and you're like, this you're curious about? There's just cool projects. Like today, I saw one about goats. I know this, this is perfect time for you guys, but like it's kind of like similar to. Um, um, have you seen like Super Yeti or Alien Boy or anything yep. or Board Eight? So it's like that, but with goats. So I'm just trying to see like more animals coming out and trying to see like who's cultivating, who's behind the project, what are the, you know, what's the community look like? But I'm just excited to see like what the next step is for creators with NFTs. You know, that's all we talk about. Yeah. I just want to see like who's the next creator going to do something dope? Is Mr. Beast doing something which he probably already has some crazy crypto fund and something's coming? Like who's going to be the next to like help make it more mainstream, kind of like what Gary Vee did? Yeah. You know, that's what I'm like looking forward to because like I said, we're still so early. Could be a few years from now but like no one really knows where this is going yet. And that's what's exciting about it. We're all navigating it together, I feel. That's what I truly feel. Yeah. We're all learning together. We're all trying to build it out and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I, th- I think you're right. I think, you know, you'll, you'll need, I, I, I think actually what's going to take it to the next level is having people that are like the Gary V's or like people that are even more iconic, like that have more mainstream appeal, uh, like the LeBrons or the Drakes, like cultural icons. Uh, obviously Mayweather and these guys kind of did it, but yeah, I, the, 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 there's some guys that like, you know, th- that I'm waiting for. I'm like, okay, well, when they put something out, it's going to like, it's going to create a yeah. firestorm. I know Brady did something too, but yeah. Yeah. So like LaMelo Ball. Yeah. I got both. Well, I got all the NFTs for him, but like, I love what he did. First yeah. of all, young kid, everyone loves him. Super dope. Cool guy off the court, but he tied his NFTs to his performance on the court. You know? So like, I feel like people are starting to think outside the box in terms of utility so, like, if you had the cards and he won Rookie of the Year, they all became, like, platinum or gold. You know what I mean? And then if he wins it's other, another award, it goes to, like, a new level. Yeah. So, you're basically investing in the player, which is, like, that kind of stuff is cool to me. But the LeBron piece, I feel like they should have done something with Space Jam. And maybe they will drop some kind of Space Jam NFT. Because I feel like that's, like, the perfect that's way genius, yeah. to connect Looney Tunes, LeBron, all these, like, brands and characters to NFTs I think would go, like, super viral and crazy. But... Let me throw this on you. If you think LeBron was to release an NFT, what do you think he would put out? Would it be like, uh, you know, his his hairline of a chunk of him doing <laughs> something? <laughs> I think it would be, I don't know. I think it might be like, you know, he's he's entering into year 19, right? So 19 Sweet. years of, I don't know, not every year, like 19 editions of like a, oh, you know, kind of like a, his dunk or something like that. Yeah, kind of um, like a dunk through the years or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. I think. Sick. Yeah, I don't know. I think Drake very easily could, you know, yeah. put out an NFT of a song. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you. I would bid for a song. Like, imagine it was like Drake featuring Sean Canungo and oh. that's on Spotify. And that's an NFT that not only do you own and you can get the royalties off of it, or but you get your name in the song. Forever. It's just there. Forever. And when it's you, like, yeah, it's wow. like, that's it's like one dance, Drake featuring Sean Canungo. 
like he creates a song that's yeah. an NFT. Like, yo, I mean, that would be how, sick. Who? I mean, would you pay? I mean, I would pay for that the shit. The thing is, I'll pay for it, but I feel like the amount that that's gonna get to is gonna be so wild. But I would love to be a part of it. Yeah, Even yeah. Like yeah. call him oh, here, like just to be able what, to okay, be a part okay, of that. Okay, stuff. let's say let's say you have a Drake song. Let, let's hypo let's hypothesize. Let's say Drake puts out an NFT, and one of the sort of attributes of that NFT is that you get a feature on the song. And maybe there's a, I, I know you, I don't, I don't know if you can sing or not, or rap, but maybe you have like a quick thing, but it says featuring, it says Drake featuring Navin. Yeah. Or maybe it's Navin featuring Drake. I don't know. Like wow. how much would you pay for that? There's no amount I would, I would pay. I'd pay any amount. <laughs> Cause you gotta think about this. If the, I would if, pay any amount. If this was it. on Spotify for the rest of our lives yeah. and people are obviously gonna be playing that song, millions of plays are gonna happen. Yeah. That's sick. You know, maybe it goes platinum. You get the platinum record on your wall. Yeah. The, the, the only <laughs> thing I can see is like uh, Drake featuring Jeff Bezos and Bezos paid like a, a good like 20, 200 million for it. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, but that, that's what I'm talking about. That yeah. to me now, I don't know if Drake would ever do that. We're getting Drake so many ideas, by the way. We need to make sure we, we need, this needs to be repurposed and yeah, put on Twitter. We, yeah. And we Instagram, need to send we gotta, Drake. We, we need to send this to Drake. The the NFT byproduct is the is the feature tag. <laughs> the feature uh, tag. Or yeah, I mean, with with again, we're just there's so we're many opportunities. We're just spitballing stuff. We're just spitballing right stuff, but <laughs> the opportunities are endless. Uh, what are you excited? What are you in terms of the creator economy? Um, what what are you what are you excited about? You 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 mentioned the NFT piece. Anything yep. else that you're seeing that you you've been really excited about? I'm just excited about the growth of like certain creators. First of all, we're both huge Colin Samir fans. I love Publish Press. I love what they're doing. Yeah. And I've, there's also tons of other creator economy newsletters and all that kind of stuff. But it's just nice to see, like, how many are coming up now and how many are becoming, like, really reliable resources. And it's just dope because I feel like I'm starting to see a lot more YouTube creators pop up, 100K, 200K, and some, like, subscribers all in one year. Mm. Kind of like how Airac popped up out of nowhere. To me, that's dope. You know, I, for me, it's just exciting to see, like, all the creators come out, they're starting to get m more monetization, starting to build across platforms. And because there's so much education, they're starting to understand how to build a personal brand more. Even yeah. though we're still years away from everyone getting that, yeah, it's starting to like be more mainstream because of guys like Mr. Beast and his company and everyone trying to help and lead Jin and et cetera, et cetera. What, what, what's your, what's your um, g give me the current state of social media <laughs> right now. Y you know, are you, are you more bullish on TikTok Good Instagram, yeah. YouTube. I, I want you to write. Good question. Okay, yeah, like hot takes. I don't like YouTube. I think YouTube takes too much money from the creators, especially when you get to a certain platform okay. and level where we're at. It doesn't make sense for creators to be on the platform because they're taking 50 plus percent at times. You know what I mean? I totally disagree with you, but I'll get with you later. That's totally fine. And then on top of that, but also on the flip side of that, for someone like us, we want to build our own platform. So there's always like different angles to take about it. TikTok, I love. The whole LinkedIn thing they just did with the resumes um was crazy where they you, do you see it the resume feed i i like it because that's I, where gen z is and it's just like flipping the script a little bit so i i i heard about this that yeah. tiktok was coming out with like a linkedin competitor where they're coming out with like is it like resumes like video, it's literally video resumes, resumes like big okay. sean a whole bunch of we got a whole bunch of celebrities to like post job postings on yeah there. i saw that yeah. people submit their resumes live with a video which i think is dope because that's what the next generation wants to do they want to go viral for that kind of stuff they're also building a cameo competitor. Yeah. Same as Instagram. So like now we're just trying to figure out like who's actually going to lead the race. I still love Instagram. That's my favorite app. But I feel like over the next few years, those two are going to be going head to head. I don't know like where if it's going to be like the older heads are on Instagram and the Gen Z stick to TikTok. But like they're also coming like Instagram's about to launch exclusive stories, which is like kind of like OnlyFans pay X amount of dollars, get exclusive stories. Like they're all starting to be. Yep. They're all trying to be the, the all in one platform. That's what I feel like they're trying to build towards. Yeah. And I feel like they're also going to start adding NFTs probably soon within their platform somehow. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's going to, I think that's going to be exciting to me. I, the way that I look at social media right now, I think YouTube is a great place of building like true trust. Yep. The best way of building trust is through video in my opinion. Yep. And actually I think TikTok. I don't think TikTok is a great platform for building trust. I think it's a great platform for getting growth and like getting people to like, you know, just see you. Yeah. And I don't yeah. believe all the, I don't believe all the follows and the likes and all the stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. I think some of it is a bit, uh, questionable, but I, I, I don't think that, 
TikTok is the best place to build trust. I think you build trust through podcasts and YouTube. Yeah, I agree with that. Because like, if you look on, if you look at the bad side of TikTok, there's a lot of people saying they're a financial expert or a crypto expert or whatever, and it's leading to people getting scammed and all this kind of bad stuff. But I do. Uh, we've always been on the same page. Podcasts love. YouTube is like it's a great place to start. And I feel like once you get to a certain point, then it may not be, but it also depends on the creator and how you are, right? Because the other thing about YouTube is like, if you're not consistent, you're not gonna be pushed. So if you're not posting every single day, if you're not using shorts every single day, if you don't have a good piece of content once or twice a week, it becomes tough. So when you're in certain situations where like, if you're a filmmaker or some channels only post once a month, that's when it gets tough. And that's kind of what I'm referring to. But yeah. outside that, if you're just starting, and now that YouTube shorts is killing, I have a guy who is how, on our. How come I can't see YouTube Shorts on my, like, when I it try to be post on your phone now? Is it there? No, it's not. Check check now or maybe update the app because I just got it also on my phone. Um, but I have a guy on on our in the lab team, who's he does like you know video plays esports video games. He's one of our designers. Started posting TikTok Shorts. Get it, now he's averaging like hundred two hundred thousand views a short. He's like past a thousand subscribers in a couple months. Like it's like working. So it's cool to see that like it's helping the un, you know the underserved creator who has really good content and needs a place to grow. Yeah. Right. I love that. I haven't done any YouTube shorts, but I should, I should you're, just like re re Yo, that's your slack. Uh, you're slacky heavy. No, I've been thinking about it, but I'm like, I, bro, you're the king of content. I'm so disappointed that you know, okay. You like what YouTube shorts? No, because like when I go to like upload a video, yeah. I know I have to hashtag shorts, Yeah, but I thought some people have create a short, they do have create a short, so you just don't have it, but still upload the video, hashtag shorts, and it'll, uh, it should automatically put it into the shorts category, and it won't show up on I your know. main feed. I know, but wh wh when I look at, when I look at, this is like so uninteresting for the podcast, <laughs> but when I look at this, like I'm not seeing shorts. Yeah, you don't have in the- In my explorer. You don't even have the tab, I think. Yeah, so- Is that the top? Is it shorts tab at the top? No. Yeah, man, you just- I don't have it. Dude, I don't have it. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, I'm gonna blame you, man. You gotta I, get no, your team on it. <laughs> I, no, we gotta get back. We gotta get on shorts, guys. Some of the stuff that we're putting up, we gotta put on shorts. Definitely. Yeah. He just told us put on shorts. We gotta put it on shorts. Um, I, I'm, I, I hate Instagram. I think Instagram is the yellow pages. <laughs> and I, it's so frustrating because it's like you have to post on there. Yeah. It's like a fucking, hamster wheel like you constantly have to post just to make sure that people know that you're not dead yeah to make sure right i told yep. the team like we have this strategy right like we gotta post two tiktoks we're gonna post three blah, blah, this and then like oh, the stories right we gotta post stories and i'm like okay, yeah it's my job every day to post stories yeah i i put this on myself because stories is like it actually showcases that you're alive right it, it's like a pulse it's like a beating pulse it is. um and it shows some sort of relevance and but it's such a hamster wheel it's like content, content it's so content. much and to like properly get on the algorithm which you guys probably have looked up or seen it's like a certain amount of stories like three or four a day it's like at least one reel a day plus your main feed post plus your stories have to do like a sticker to get engagement it's like a lot it's a full-time job bro and it's like you're trying to be on everything you know what i mean you're trying to be on all these platforms every platform almost is going to demand a singular person to run it. I feel like long-term because there's going to be so much happening across all the platforms. I, I, I don't know how people do it. It's, it's really just, it's <laughs> nuts that, it's that psychotic. <laughs> everyone like, it's like, okay, your job is just TikTok. Yeah. Your job is Instagram. My job is Instagram stories. Your <laughs> yeah. job is Twitter. It's like, what yeah. is going on? Like you can't be a social media manager anymore. You have to nope. be able to, it's not even full. It's like too much as a full-time job. Yeah. Plus like video creation, video uh, pre-production and storytelling. Like it's crazy. Don't get me wrong. Like I love creating. Yeah. Cool. Like I love putting up content. I love putting out videos. Like I love it. I wouldn't be in the create. We, we, we wouldn't be in a fucking studio right now if we didn't love creation. Exactly. Like we love it. But it's, um, it's a lot of work. And I think the barriers to entry in if you're building your personal brand or your own, your, your own branded company, I mean, the stakes are higher now. It's higher. There's so much competition. Everyone's trying to do it. And the people with money, you're paying multiple people to do it for them. Yeah. You got to compete with them. And it's just like, I just feel like it's tough, man. But like, it's also fun because like we're learning, we're experimenting. It's a journey for all of us. Yeah. But you got to put out I was, so I, much content. So I was literally talking to a creator uh, yesterday. Yeah. And 
he was asking me, he said, from a personal perspective, and, and I think this is, you know, if you can give some good advice on this, like, he's trying to build his own personal brand yep. on TikTok. And he's thinking, should I just be niche? Should I just be focused on one particular thing? Or should I just do what gets the most views and it's like kind of all over the place? Right? What is the best strategy when it comes to TikTok? Well, I feel like everyone on TikTok, anyways, all the TikTok coaches that I've seen, everyone's always like niche, niche, niche. Right. Not in the niche, you're not going to grow. To be honest, I've seen people who are in niches grow the most as compared to someone who's not. But also, if you're just a dancer, if you, see, if he's just a dancer, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, well, dancing. That, that content transcends every freaking Absolutely. area. But if you're just like a teacher, if you're just doing like whatever math equations, that's Stick what you're going to be known for. And that's what you're best at. So I, I do feel like the niches help because like then the hashtag gets, you know, the hashtags get you the followers. Those people are always going to have you on the FYP and all that kind of stuff. I've we've done a lot of experiments. I'm sure you have, too. It's like I've tried it where it's like, can we just do a broad spectrum? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. No hit at all. Like it didn't hit at all. But then when you double down on the niche, it's like in the lab, pure basketball content. Boom, obviously it's going to grow because everyone loves basketball is going to fall. Right. That, you know? Yeah, I've been kind of all over the place with my own TikTok content. I'm like <laughs> posting like all. But you've had a lot of good stuff that's like been crazy, like viral, like really good. like Yeah, like yeah, yeah. But there's no like direction. And, and yeah. I think if anybody on my TikTok that anybody follows me on TikTok, they'd be like, hey, do you know who Sean Kuno is? Like, no, never heard of him. <laughs> like, but yet they follow me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I think that's why it's. Yeah, I think, but n being known for something is probably the way to go. I feel like that's the thing. I don't like, that's not an issue with TikTok, but that's like the way to grow on TikTok. Yeah. You know, like all the people that I follow or see, it's like they're always sitting in the same place. The setup's the same. They're talking the same. Same, you know what I mean? Same music, but the words are different. But they're killing it. Yeah. You know, and recently I found some like really hilarious creators on there who are like doing some really funny stuff. But every video, all the thumbnail, all the little thumbnails, everything's exact same. Yeah. You know, and I guess consistency kills for them. Yeah, no, I, I I think at some point, though, people want to see, you know, that's if you bring them to YouTube, then you know, they'll show your that, side. But I, I, exactly. I always tell people this is that the the switching, I don't know if it's called switching cost, but I'm always amazed at how many people don't go to something that you're posting or you're, you're, you're promoting or like you follow somebody on TikTok. Like I saw somebody yesterday. I, I saw this guy yesterday. He's like, you know what you should do? You should, um, you should post your videos on Twitter. I'm like, dude, like, told you that. Yeah, yeah somebody told me. He's like, somebody who only follows me on TikTok. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know what you should do? I love that. You should, you should post on. You should post on. He's like, you should post on Twitter, and then you should post on YouTube. I'm like, okay, I, I actually do. But then somebody's like, you know, like people just don't know, right? They people only follow you in one vertical, and that's all they know about you. Yeah. So. I think people are just lazy. I mean, I'm the same way. And yeah, I did I tell you about the the the, the Russell Peters thing, uh, the podcast, the Russell Peters podcast. I remember we talked about this briefly. Like he started the podcast up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a good podcast. Yeah. He's got great guests, and oh, he's no got views. a great following. Yeah. But 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 to translate that into the the thing that they're going to exactly yeah, it's it's tough. It, it's tough, man. If you like, the toughest thing is to convert. Like let's say all these let's Addison Ray whatever hundred million followers. Like, it's not transitioning the same to every single platform. Because some people, like you said, not that they're lazy. I just think they don't care. They like the app they're using. They, they swipe up. They see you. And the best thing is, like, once they're done, they're on to the next creator. Yeah. And they're on to the next. And like, for them to translate to another platform, especially YouTube, and watch long-form content, when you've been giving them 10-second, 50-second content, it's a grind. Well, it. I, what I find interesting is that Let's say you really love somebody. Like you really love, for example, LeBron. Yeah. Will you go and follow LeBron's tequila company? Because he has a te tequila company. Los, yeah. uh, I'll answer this for you. Los Labos. Because I love LeBron. I didn't follow the tequila company. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so what are we doing here? Like, you know what I mean? Like, e I mean, e even for – even friends, right? Yeah. You have certain friends that, you know, that you, that, that love you or love, you know, you know, you're, you're, but are you going to follow their like design company? Like I, I'm like, I love to support my friends course, and the course. shit that they have. Yeah. But just people just like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, uh, 
I think like so same thing with you right love supporting the friends but like I feel like the average type person who's like they're not doing what we do they're not into social media that much they just don't care yeah yeah. But they love you. They, they, they love you. Yeah, they're yeah. going to support you. And if you post a YouTube video, they, they may go subscribe and watch it and like. But that's not, like, their goal. They just want to support you on the platform they use the most and keep it, I think, keep it as simple as they can type thing. Yeah. You know? So that's why, um, yeah, I just find it, I find it, that's why getting somebody on each platform is important because you're, like, yeah. Because you don't, because you might have a completely different audience in any platform that you're at. Exactly, and I think that's another struggle too. Is like, um, there's a guy we talked to the other day. We want to bring him into the to the brand. He makes really funny basketball content on TikTok. Yeah, and he started YouTube, and obviously nobody followed. But maybe 100 followers he has like 2.2 point something million on TikTok. Wow. And he's asking us like, you know, how do I do that? He wants to venture outside of the funny content he makes. So he has, wait, 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 wait. He has 2.5 million yeah. followers TikTok. on TikTok. Big TikToker. Wow. Yeah. And, but, but he can't translate that to YouTube. He's having a hard time. Trans Even his Instagram. His Instagram, I think, is maybe at like 10K. He's having a tough time. And obviously, the links are there. He's promoting it. He's posting it. He's like, guys, great, new, like fun new YouTube video. Go watch it. That's the struggle, bro. Totally. Like, people don't Dude, care. I, I, I do the same thing <laughs> on LinkedIn. I do the, the same thing on LinkedIn, which is like, I'm like, uh, by the way, the <laughs> I'm like, the extended cuts can be YouTube. I, nobody gives a shit. They're just not. I just know most people on LinkedIn, what they're doing is like they're literally sitting on the toilet and they're just <laughs> scrolling. And then maybe they'll, they'll, they'll have like another Sean post. They're like, okay, let me go through this. And then it's extended cut. I'm like, nah, just k keep scrolling. I got to finish my shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what people are doing on LinkedIn. It's, it's, they're not going and watching an extended cut or something. Yeah. They're just on that platform because they're in that moment. They're on the toilet and they're like, I don't want to go to a YouTube video because I'm like, I'm here. Yeah. I feel like the other tough, tough thing is like, unless you really love that creator and the content they're posting, but to go watch a 15 minute plus video, it's almost like a commitment for most people. It's like, where am I going to do that? How am I going to put the time into it? But like you said, if you're taking a dump, that's like 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. You're scrolling through. You're, you're probably sitting there for 10 minutes, knocking out all your content for the day. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess it's like, so is the question really that you, like who are our super, super fans? Because, yeah. for example, I love Steph Curry, but I don't subscribe to Steph Curry's Instagram channel. I mean, or his YouTube, YouTube channel. Yep. I know he – I think he might have one. I think he does. But I don't yeah. subscribe to it, and I yeah, love same. Steph Curry. Yep. So is it is it identifying just your super fans, like the 100 people, the, 100, the 150 people that love your stuff and – just maximizing the effort because those are the people that will pay. Those are the people yeah. that will promote. Um, I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. We always talk about like the thousand true fans, whatever we want to call it, whatever the number is for your, you know, for yourself. I think that's key. Like we're always trying to, even like us right now, we're like, we're always trying to cultivate like, who are these, who, who exactly, what are their names? What do they do? Where do they live? Like who are exactly all these people? How can we find more of them? How can we get them to spread the word of mouth and maybe bring in a few extras but I feel like that is the key. Yeah. Focus on them, build with them. Even like in our Discord, like tons of people in the Discord, but not everyone's coming to the meetings and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Cause they don't, not everyone cares and that's fine. But the people who come, like, you know, those 30, 40 people, they're committed to everything that we're doing. Yeah. That's and that's why it's so important to interact and, and build everything we're doing with them first. I mean, what's the moral of the story here that, <laughs> that people are just apathetic and we're just, I mean, I, I put myself in this category too. Yeah. Like, or we're just, there's too much stuff and we can't just, much, we can't be interested in everything. And like, I think there's just so much happening and life is moving so fast. Yeah. You know, it's just like, you look, look at our daily life. Like after this, you're probably going to go film some more content. I got to hop on phone calls. Like everyone's doing so much in a day. Yeah. It's so like, how much can we commit across everywhere? Obviously we want to follow everyone. I would love to see all of LeBron James's, uh, content, uh, everything. Even if they had a YouTube channel, I'd love to watch everything, but I can't. Yeah. You're going to, we're going to miss out. And I feel like that's what makes it tough. Yeah, that's the creator economy, man. <laughs> that is the creator economy. Yeah. Uh, just to wrap it up, um, I was gonna ask you: Have you been following the Maria Taylor, Rachel Nichols uh, drama at ESPN? Yes, uh, I'm not following. I've seen it everywhere. So yes, I guess okay, as a okay. bystander, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of funny things about Rachel, and obviously a lot of bad things. Yeah. Um, but feel free if there's something you wanna. Well, no, I, I, I mean, just really quickly, what happened to describe the story? Last year, when Rachel Nichols was in the bubble, she had 
uh, there, somebody had recorded. Uh, I don't know if she left her. The, the, the story is that she oh, left yeah. her Zoom on or something yeah. like that, and she was talking to one of LeBron's advisors about the fact that she would be taken off NBA Countdown for because of their poor record on diversity, and then uh, Maria Taylor would come in and replace her uh, there, and she didn't want that to happen. Bec- yeah. And then, you know, not that Rachel Nichols is racist. No one has ever, you know, said that, but she just didn't want her spot taken be taken by uh by anybody just someone else yeah yeah, yeah. and uh it kind of blew up and you know i think rachel nichols i think she lost her spot on nba countdown yep. she got replaced by malika andrews and uh man i was just like following it i was just like so in it's tune like i was just i was wanting to hear what happened and i've been talking to my friends about this and i'm like why am i so fascinated by this and this is th- this goes to a broader point that you know i love the nba but i think i love the narratives around the nba mm-hmm. like i love hearing about the trades <laughs> the, the drama line. the storylines yeah. like who's pissed who's not yeah. more than the actual game in itself yeah i agree with you it's uh, entertainment it's entertainment yeah and i i i think we have to realize that when everything is on your phone it's just like whether it's the NBA, whether it's this drama with Mar- you know uh, with uh, Maria Taylor, and it's uh, just entertainment. Yeah. I think we forget how many things are actually just entertainment. Yeah. Did you see? This is the one thing I'll say about that. Did you see the TikTok going around with her and Jimmy Butler? Yes, I did. Yeah. That was the funniest thing for me. Yeah. <laughs> were like the I, comments I, and what people were saying. <laughs> I was trying to validate that story, and I, I, you know, I, you, you know, and I think if. You know, it's not it, – this happens to women, you know, and it, it's I, – I was feeling – you know, I felt bad for Rachel Nichols because, yeah. you know, you don't want that – you know, you no gr- no female wants that put out that exactly. they were banging. I mean, guys – guys – I mean, no – for guys too, but no female wants that. So I just want to validate the story because yeah. that is like – like, you know, girls – that's that's a big thing, right? So I, I I can't validate the story, but yeah, I was it was kind of funny. Just, I, I I felt bad for Rachel. Yeah, like you, like you said, it's all entertainment. We don't know what's real or what's not, but his fans yeah. like it just adds to the story and the excitement of what's happening within the NBA, especially with the finals happening right now. Yeah, totally. Um, that I I wasn't. Yeah, I I, I felt bad for her. I I just felt like she didn't need this at this time. Yeah, so it's definitely bad I, timing. For whatever happened. I don't know, like who resurfaced and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but um, Suns or Bucks. Yeah, uh, just to close it off. You know what? I I I didn't watch the game yesterday, but I did see the highlights, and I think I think Giannis is. I mean, his stats looked amazing. Again, I didn't watch the game. Yeah. I only watched the highlights, but he looked great. Yep. In the highlights, and I think, you know, two games in Phoenix. I think the Bucks they normally lose the first game, and I think they're figuring it out. A uh, couple key players on the Suns are not there. I think Bucks take the next two games, and it, this goes to seven. Oh, okay. I'm calling Suns in six. For sure. <laughs> calling Suns in six. I like. I want you I I am cheering for Giannis. I think Giannis is way better than people make him out to be. Him, I yeah. think. I think he does have some flaws. Yeah. Like anybody. Yeah, of course. But he is an unbelievable player offensively and defensively, and I I just want him to get a chip. Yep. And I don't really like Chris Paul. I respect Chris Paul, but I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I really want Chris Paul to win. I'm on the other side. I yeah. really want him to get one because I know he's about to retire. Yeah, no, I, I think it'll be nice. I, yeah. it'll be nice for him to get so one. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But Suns, and, Suns and six. We, wow, we, we gotta six. make. It I'm gonna say Bucks and seven, but okay. But I, you know, it's uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. I, I, yeah, really love chopping up with you, and uh, I think, I think this is gonna get on the NFT uh, page again. I think. Let's do it, man. Three for three, four for four, whatever the number is. Let's. Let's keep getting on that page. Let's do it, man. That's our goal. (laughs) All right, buddy. Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate it, buddy. Awesome. (laughs)